the problem with that is the the fear of failure. Because you know we need to invest in in projects that fail as much as projects that succeed. And if you don't if you if you don't allow people to fail, you don't allow that necessary workshop process. You know where you will see oh where it doesn't work, mm -hmm. and actually invest in those failures as well. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the the ilo ilos. You know the apprentices. Yeah. Okay, in in the old days, um, the government kind of like didn't have the agenda to make sure that the programs are uh, are profitable. You know, can make money. Uh, whereas now they they do have that in their KPI that every show that they do must uh, make money, cannot um, and must have a certain rating. So I mean, in a way, there's almost like two tracks that we need to focus on. One is the the shows to feed the the public, the entertainment. So you can have your prime time tanglins, you know, where you know. Uh, people will just turn on the TV and, and, and they'll always have it running in the background you know at that seven o'clock hour because that is the show that's going on and that could be you know that, that fills the spot for 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 that particular um, category of people who like that kind of show and then there's also there's also the <laughs> there's also uh, shows like the pupil that didn't get a lot of a very high rating yeah. but the quality of the show is really really good the quality of writing is really good the character development it's really, really well done, but they couldn't pull off another season because ratings are so low. So if you actually uh, 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 plan what shows you actually um, invest in based on the ratings, chances are you may not, the, a lot of the, the very good quality shows are going to drop off and not going to get a chance to come back. We are not willing to invest in shows that we, that they're not willing to invest in shows that they feel will not appeal to a mass audience, which for a business is fair. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's a legitimate path to take. At the same time, from what I've seen, I feel they also vastly underestimate yes. the intelligence of their audience. Authentic mm -hmm. material can be made that's entertaining. And I, I know we're all in agreement about yeah. that. Yes. And so, uh, largely, I feel what happens is they, they underestimate what the audience can take. And so that's why the mass market stuff tends to be trash. And so, and then also it goes into what Deborah said about um, they're not willing to invest in failure. And I think this is something new filmmakers need to understand as well. You're not, I mean, like Bu Jun Feng worked, for, worked on his script for two years, but he also did other stuff at the time. You're not going to make a stellar product only by looking at stellar products for two years. You're going to make like, like there's, there's a, Daniel Dennett has this thing called Sturgeon's Law. 90% of what's out there is going to be trash. Mm -hmm. you know, absolutely. And, and, but, to get to that good 10%, if you're making content, you have to be willing to make trash a lot of the time and learn from your mistakes. Yeah. You know, earlier you, were, you had asked, do we have the ability to produce that much? I think we definitely do. But I think it's the fear of failure, it's the fear of criticism. But where did that fear come from? It mm. came from the time that we were young. Mm. So subconsciously, it's been impressed upon us that this works, this doesn't. This is safe, this is unsafe. Yeah. This is polished, this is raw. So whenever someone comes up with something and they, they feel like, what's, what's my friends going to say? What's the society going to say? Is the TV going to censor me? Is the newspaper going to roast me? So things like that is what's bothering people. I can tell you for a fact, there's a lot of friends that I personally know, and one of them is our dear cinematographer over here. They have a lot of great content, but we are just afraid to bring it out because of the fear of criticism, because yeah. it's been impressed upon us since yes. a young age. It's an agonizing reality that I've observed. I don't know if it's just me, but I think that we are a very, very critical and cynical society. Yeah. Um, is it our upbringing? Is it our obsession to quantify success uh, with you know, dollars or grades at, at, uh, when we were younger? Yeah. So, because I, I understand why Singapore went in that direction, because we wanted to be number one, we wanted to compete, we wanted to be uh, a strong participant in the international business. But let's recognize that when it comes to creativity and art, we cannot follow that same formula. What worked for this, for commerce and for economy, is not going to work for art. We are not going to be able to quantify excellence in art with the same uh, measurements and calibration that we used over the last 50, 60 years. I love that a lot. Like instead, because this support local, this hashtag support local mm -hmm. movement has been going on for oh, yeah. so long, and yeah. and uh, with, with good cause. Yeah, with good yeah. cause. And of it course. has helped in that sense. But I think the mentality of believing that yeah. we can produce yes. good work is yes. more important. But I think it's also locally. Mm. 
there people are start by people I mean organizations, uh, mm. prospective sponsors are beginning yeah. to believe local yes. and take notice. Yeah, because I think there was a there was a long period of time where it's like spot local, spot local, but that's actually not enough. Yeah. Uh, and we realize believe local is actually the more uh, uh, you know uh, rightful phrase to uh, 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 to what's the word to. You know what I mean? To instill to or, or what not. Yeah. Or to champion. We have the stories, we have the people who write it. It's just that we need to believe more in ourselves, I think, as a nation. Um, and of course, uh, if we are able to go big glo glo globally, I mean, Ilo Ilo, Apprentice, all these films did really big uh, for us in Singapore. I don't know how the global impact was, but for us in Singapore, this was, I think, really meaningful. And it showed us that we really, really can do it as a nation. People want to watch our stories, people are accepting us. and. We can do more of such successes, I think, in the future. Cast this beautiful American or beautiful <laughs> yes. Australian yes. Uh, actor yeah. as the leading role, mm -hmm. but he's not Singaporean. But never mind, yeah. he's good looking. As a Singaporean actor, you feel like, what about me? I I am authentic enough to tell this Singaporean story. You know, exactly. like it should be me. Is that we need to first start believing in the industry. Mm. Um, not just us, I mean obviously we do believe in the industry but the people who watch us, the people who manage us, the powers that be need to believe in the industry first and um, uh, it's hard for us because we have like a lot of obstacles to overcome in order to like like get the general population to start watching us instead of Hollywood things. I, um, I do think that uh, one of the things you mentioned was that we had the resources. I think that yeah, definitely we were given we were given time to work on it, mm -hmm. and it is proof that we need time to develop mm -hmm. things. Um, in fact, the team actually went through a period of about half a year to seven months to prepare for the entire production, and the reason for this was because I think they saw the value in the Singapore story being told. They saw they wanted to sit to prove a point that look if we use. If we use our own local actors that are not, that are not, um, so-called top A-listers, of course we have like you know really great people on the show, but majority of us we came I came from nothing, I I, I, I did a movie yeah and and that was great and then I pretty much fell off the radar after that, but they took freelancers like us and they said we're giving you a chance this is your shot you take it or you leave it, do it and so we did. And, and because we, we all believed in the same thing and we all believe in the worth of a Singapore story, we built something that has lasted for three seasons. And I think this just proves that yes, the Singapore story is worth telling, that's mm -hmm. number one. And it's, it is worth investing in, that's number two. And number three, it is worth other people watching because we do have a following and people, our ratings are stable. So it proves it. It proves that Singapore, it has stories that people want to watch. Yeah and we should pay more attention to the local stories. I think we've come of age in, in film. In, in theatre, we have, we have come quite a long way. I think a lot of our theatre is quite world class. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but with The Apprentice and this recent spate of films that are being acknowledged around the world in film festivals, on, on, uh, by international juries, and winning international awards like, like Kirsten Hans or Popeye, for example, uh, there, there, there's a whole uh, craft that, uh, to it that we've kind of worked and mastered, I think, and Jun Feng was very much at the forefront of it. I mean, it takes time, and he took five years to write the script, uh, and we can't do things, uh, you know, in shortcuts. I, I think to do good work, you really have to invest uh, in, in every department, uh, and, and to, to make every department really World class. And it all starts from education, I guess, because it's so strong here. Education is important, education is important. And it is. And yes, and it, it is. is, it is. But um, I think that the arts also could be something that the education system focuses on. So that just to break that fear, mm -hmm. you know, instill the idea that they can do something, that they, whatever creative process is going on in their heads, it could come to life. Because, you know, I remember as a child, oh my goodness, no, no, no. Everything is, was a no. And, um, I mean, it, it made me who I am today. It made me push myself further. You know what, I'm gonna do it. Because you said no. Mm -hmm. And I think for, if, 
during our time, the, that generation, that's how we pulled through. For most of us, I, I mean, from the stories that I hear from my friends and stuff like that. However, in this generation, if the opportunity is given to a child and you know like, oh my gosh, I can actually do this. The wonders of the future for Singapore is beyond me. So I think that we should encourage that at a young age to not be afraid to share whether it is uh, you know, in a form of a, a short story or a poem or a song or a script. It could be anything, you know. I think it should be encouraged, yeah. Young people, young children, young whatever, they need role models to yeah. look up to. And I think that's where we're coming from today, today the Anthony Chen and the uh, Bu Jun Feng and all of them, Kirsten Han. I mean, the female ones have to come out as well, obviously, oh all the female awesome. filmmakers, right? Oh right. right. So, <laughs> so they need these role models to look up to and say, hey, I can be like them too. So if, yeah. if we can influence the, the, the young ones who would like to be a performing artist, for example, or musician or artist or singer, music, anything, right? Uh, they'll be great. And that's a starting point as well. So we influence them and then they in turn, when they come up, they stand the lift back down and they influence the others and that will be a thriving community, arts and culture community in Singapore. Yeah. But how? That is the question. Well, that is the question. Like something no, like this no. is a start. Yeah. Like this is a start. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is a start. start. It inspires I think, I think There's plenty of things happening in Singapore uh, when it comes to the arts. Um, I think the only thing I can urge Singaporeans to do is to step out of their homes and go see them and watch them, really. Um, we have galleries, we have concerts, we have theatre, we have movies, we have everything. We really do. So we truly hope that Singaporeans would engage themselves in the arts and appreciate the fact that um, the arts community is doing their best to, you know, attract them out of their houses, really. <laughs>